Hello, and uh, it's Richard from Richard's Guitars. How are you doing? Um, I've, I've got some incredibly exciting news today, and um, I've mentioned it already. And um, it's, it, this might be a bit of a long one, possibly. I might even cut it up. I'll see where it all goes. Because as you probably know, I just sort of, I've got something on my mind I want to talk about. Um, because it's quite an involved subject, it could go anywhere and uh, quite, quite, it could be quite lengthy. But um, needless to say, if you have ever had an interest in court guitars or would like to know about court guitars, I'm definitely the guy that can help you. Um, you won't have heard me mention court since my video started a couple of years ago. Um, and the reason you won't have heard me talk about court guitars is because there have been massive, enormous problems with getting court guitars into the UK. Um, I won't mention manufacturer uh, distributors' names, um, but just to say there was um, there was a distributor that was doing a great job, and um, political things happened behind the scenes. Uh, stuff happened that's beyond the content of this video uh, or the depth that we need to go to because uh, I don't want to get into trouble and um, so over the last two to three years there has been literally nothing but problems uh, and um, I kind of banged my head against the brick wall as you've seen in other videos I tend to do when I love something and I banged it and I banged it and I banged it in, in just the kind of like um, when something's important to you, you just don't want to see it go. You don't want to, you don't want to just sort of give up on it. And in my experience, um, although sometimes you're not rewarded for, uh, you know, uh, doing that, um, you know, you've got to kind of presume there is always a way through. And because uh, quite, well, sometimes there is. And then why would you want to give up if there is that opportunity that's going to be just around the corner? That mindset's got me into trouble sometimes, and, uh, uh, but that's another subject as well. Um, but on this occasion, well actually on this occasion it didn't pay off at all. <laughs> um, because I banged my head, banged my head, banged the head, and then the just like in other cases the distribution changed. But you could argue that was the door that was opening. Um, in the end the distributor, despite all the, uh, let's just say, promises, um, in the end it all just got uh, taken away from them. And you could say, thank God. Um, so where we're at now is a new distributor has taken over. And the exciting thing is the distributor that's taken them over is the same distributor that I work with for Godan guitars. Um, now, despite the fact I have all the problems getting hold of Godan guitars, at least it's somebody who I know, uh, somebody who I respect, and we're looking forward to the challenge of working together. So that's a start. That's a, that is a, there's definitely the acorns of, possibilities happening now. Um, so where we go from here, um, I wanted to give you a background behind why court guitars have historically been so important to me. So I started business in 1995. Um, and um, so I started in 1995. One of probably one of the first guitars that really impressed me in the acoustic world were caught, uh, were Tanglewood guitars. So I got these guitars and they just seemed to be head and shoulders above other things I was finding at the price. And um, with, without boring you to death over, which would be even longer video than it will be now, I just love these Tanglewood guitars. So over the years, you, you're building your knowledge. I was only about 20, whatever it was, uh, was that 25 years ago, so 24. So, uh, you know, 22 year old man, I'm a boy really, uh, starting out, and um, you're building up your knowledge base, if you like, and you're sort of naive enough to think, oh, Tanglewood, there's somebody called Tanglewood, <laughs> maybe Mr. Tanglewood, making these Tanglewood guitars. And um, clearly, as many of you will know, that just isn't the case. Um, there are many, 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 many factories um, making guitars, and then there's some factories that make guitars for lots of different people. Now court guitars are, this might be out of date now, I don't think anything's changed since I last knew about it, but I believe court are the largest manufacturer of guitars in the world. So um, 
and I'll, I'll, I'll never, all sorts of little stories I can tell you, but one of which I remember um, a young lad, probably 20 something years ago, um, was looking at the guitar and goes, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, they're the ones that copy Ibanez guitars. Um, and um, as I had learned by then, well, actually no, they, they make Ibanez guitars. <laughs> um, so uh, Ibanez, you know, things, I haven't sold Ibanez guitars for some years now, but you know, in my day there would be the World Factory, the Court Factory, uh, Fuji Gen uh, Factory making Ibanez guitars, and I'm sure there's others now, but back in the day, that's what the, there were. Um, so, you know, as far as I'm aware, you know, Ibanez don't have a factory. There is no such thing as an Ibanez factory. And I don't want to go off topic, but because there might be, look it up. But to my knowledge, Ibanez, there isn't such thing as an Ibanez factory um, that has, you know, Ibanez written across the head, <laughs> across the front door. Uh, it'll be a factory that makes them what they call OEM. You design them, they'll make them for you to spec. So Court is one of the factories that Ibanez use for their guitars. But the thing is, it doesn't stop there. You've got, um, in that genre, you have Schecter guitars. And um, I was looking, I, I bought this one along, this, this finish here that captured uh, the eyes of a few of you the other day. Uh, this one's sold, but um, this, this guitar, if you look at that finish and see how it does that kind of three tone from a very dark blue, almost black, it looks like the C look. Um, I think the guys in the shop called that the Jaws guitar. If you put like, a, put like someone getting eaten by a shark just there. Um, that would be the Jaws guitar. Um, the, um, but if you look at the Schecter website, um, I, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I wrote it down. Oh man, uh, I didn't write it down. But there's, um, you'll see that kind of, that style of finish being used across a whole range of their guitars. Um, there is a model that Ibanez, I just quickly looked at it before I came out because I'll just try and get some examples. But Ibanez are doing a new range called the Axion. AXION range, um, which had this kind of like, you'd see it, very distinctive style. And um, uh, under Court's brand, brand, that's called the um, X700 uh, Duality, I think it's called, the X700 Duality. You'll see the similarities. Um, then um, in the old days, presumably it's still the case, they may have changed the names now, but um, the Artisan Court, Artisan Basis, the high end basses really gorgeous basses, unbelievable basses. Um, they would be the um, Ibanez Presti, very similar, very similar specs, same hardware. You can see the design, the, the neck stuff, the, the, they're incredibly similar, There's almost identical specification guitars made by Court. Um, so Court aren't copying Ibanez. Ibanez are having their guitars made by Court. Um, and, um, those are the Ibanez, top end Ibanez guitars. Music Man, the Music Man um, sub basses um, made by Court. Um, uh, whether whether any of their higher end stuff is, I don't know. Um, it just goes on and on and on. GNL uh, Fender Acoustics. In the old days, most of, if not all, the Fender Acoustics of my day, when I was a Fender dealer, they were all made by Court guitars. Um, I think Epiphone. I think all of them. I think most brands that I'm aware of at some point have had association with, with uh, Court. Um, to carry on the story of my history uh, with Court, so I was kind of, I mean, I've gone forward, but back in the day when I was doing Tanglewood, I, I, hadn't, I wasn't aware in the early days of Court's existence. Um, it took some kind of political, because what I, te what I found out when I did realize that Court were making Tanglewood guitars, was that Tanglewood, all of the model codes, all of the model codes were actually court model codes, so they hadn't changed them. So there was a court model code and a Tanglewood model code, and they were identical. Court wanted to come into the UK. And I think basically court said, well, guys, we're not changing our model codes. You'll have to change yours because, you know, you buy them from our factory. So if you've been a bit sort of, maybe not naive, but if you've not bothered to change the model codes from the factory codes, that's up to you. I'm kind of filling in the gaps here. This may not happen. Um, but ultimately, um, um, Court wanted to come into the UK. Tango had had a decision to make. I don't know whether they were forced to no longer have them made by Court or whether they decided no to longer have them made by Court. But to put this in perspective, Tanglewood was my by far my biggest selling brand. We were massive Tanglewood dealers. And pretty much overnight, everything changed. 
Now the problem for me was, I this was a, one of the many threads that was running on and affecting my, you could argue, my mental health at the time. Um, I'd bring it up sometimes and this is kind of, you can see threads that run through these things. So you imagine you're employing six or seven members of staff, you're doing, I don't know, we were, we were doing about 1.5 million pound, you know, getting on toward a 2 million pound gross turnover. And then your best selling brand basically changes overnight. You know, it is literally a different product. It's a, it's a new factory. And um, clearly it was no longer what I knew of as being Tanglewood. So from my point of view, that was an incredibly hard sort of uh, part of my business life and was kind of the beginning of the end of my, my, my sort of focus on what I'd call mainstream retail. Um, so not getting dwelling on that because that'll be a long story for focus on that. But um, you can get an idea how you have a factory that is basically making guitars for all sorts of different people. Um, and then we get the Fender Acoustic Zoom. <laughs> oh my God, these are court guitars. You know, everything. You just keep seeing all these similarities and all these different things all coming from court. So court is a massively important brand. And although you could argue, um, I get excited by, you know, my, the average sale value, if I get all clinical about it, probably is about 800 pounds. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of guitars that I like in this building that are really, you know, kind of medium priced. I deliberately try and find you guys guitars that I think are absolutely attainable. You know, you can aspire to own something that's affordable, amazing, trying to be realistic about what you need to spend. Um, so the average price is probably about 800 pounds. Court guitars, I would say they're real sweet spot. Well, interestingly, if I give you an example, this is one of the new guitars that have just come in. I've got a splattering of just samples and they're all utterly amazing. So this, for example, is the new Gold series. Um, so I have been, I'm not gonna go plugging in, play, these are all different reviews, I'm not, and I don't want it to become a quick, sh like, I just wanna quickly whiz through a few things. If you look at these absolutely beautiful inlays on here, um, the detail, the workmanship on this is absolutely first class. Um, every element of that guitar is, is beautiful. Uh, there we go. Um, so with through abalone sound inlays uh, around the mm. nice little detailing around the, around, uh, the um, bridge. There's a bi-level bridge, so they've got the geometry so that you've got downward pressure on the saddle, that's all good. Uh, Power Ferro, this is called, back, solid, all solid. This guitar's all solid woods. So that's all solid Power Ferro back and sides, uh, solid. Uh, this is a torrified top, so they, they've uh, given it that age feeling and, uh, and got plectrum. But it sounds utterly, um, I'm telling you, it sounds incredible, isn't that sustaining? Uh, so, um, open Grovers, qu high quality Grover machine heads, uh, um, old vintage stuff. So literally the whole thing, that is 699. So this gives you an idea of the kind of, that, and that's kind of what I'd call, historically, that'd be kind of top end for a, for a court, you know, 700 quid. Um, I think that's that's where it's at. Um, that's at the higher ish level. The, the electroacoustic is obviously going to be about eight. You know, so, so you probably get up to, up to about eight hundred quid, which is perfect for me because the the area that maybe I wish I had more, not more, but um, I'd like more variation. For example, how many bass guitars could I recommend lately? Um, hardly any, because obviously the G and L thing all went horribly wrong. If you look at my other video there. Um, and guess who makes G&L? Court. So this little baby, look at it. Absolutely bloody brilliant. And that guitar is about 350 quid of this bass. 300, it's about 350 pounds in an absolutely gorgeous finish. Lovely balance to it. Um, so that's a whole area now. I can go, in the old days I used to sell loads of bass guitars because their basses are, if anything, I, you know, I'm not a, a specialist bass man, I'm not a bass player, but all the feedback I had over the years was bass, 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 court basses were phenomenal, um, as they are, clearly are now. The quality of them is absolutely first class, and every bass player who bought a court bass off me was just so smitten with it. So, so the whole range of court basses are superb, so I'll be bringing you those. Um, 250 quid, it's got like a little beveled edge to that look, the little open. That's 250 pounds. Um, 
Look at that, lovely, lovely. All of this stuff is amazing. If you want an electroacoustic uh, Fishman pickup, quality Fishman pickup as well. It's um, got a bass, middle and treble on there. Um, phase switch, so it's not even their most basic. They do a much more, in fact, the Faith guitars come with a much more basic uh, pickup than that one. Um, and that is solid cedar top, beautiful finishing. It's, um, that is, oh, that is blackwood. Look at that, blackwood. Uh, back and sides and that's about 380 quid so it goes on and on and on rock guitars <laughs> about 399 I think for that uh, and it's got EMG pickups it's a Floyd Rose special uh, trim uh, through neck rock guitars uh, through neck so if you look at the through neck uh, on there, so uh, EMG active pickups, and that is um, Floyd Rose special uh, trim on that. Um, so made by Floyd Rose, you know, bound board e active EMG pickups, Floyd Rose trim. That's I think that's about I think it's about six nine nine. So it's exciting times. Um, court guitars are back. I, I have got so much, so much I can talk about in terms of what court mean. And um, but I hopefully that I mean that, that pretty much sums it up really. Um, I'll be bringing you as many of these in in terms of recommendations as I can. And um, I've deliberately picked all the ones that I know are going to be so exciting because my my historic background when I started uh, playing guitar and when I got back I suppose when I got back into it in my late teens was instrumental rock guitar. So I've been so keen to find some kind of modern rock influence things. Gordon Smith, I shouldn't really say this, but I'm, um, oh, doesn't matter. Behind the scenes, I'm working with uh, Doug to get you a rock guitar made by Gordon Smith, handmade rock guitar. Um, and it's gonna be amazing. And there's something about it, it's a bit of a twist, which brings in my influences. Uh, and I don't wanna to talk too much about it because it's really quite cool and fun. And I don't want to blow the blow the blow the excitement uh, now in my video. Otherwise, I'll do my video again. I don't want to do that. Uh, so as you can see, rock guitars, acoustic guitars, electros, um, classic kind of uh, sort of S type guitars, um, basses, rock. It's all there. Everything. And so don't forget, these guys make guitars for the the brands out there. When you buy a court guitar, all you're doing is saving money. Okay, you're you're cutting through, and also, I call it like an honest brand because you just not you don't have to go to like. Actually, this is a good point. Calm down, Rix. Relax. Good point. Good point. Would I like to sell Schecter guitars? I really would, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really would like to sell Schecter guitars. They kind of represent a lot of my my personality. Um, some of them are, aren't, uh, but some are. Um, would I like to sell Ibanez guitars? Actually, for all the pain that I went through selling them in the old days, um, because of a lot of moms and dads were buying Ibanez guitars for their kids, and so it was a lot of like discounting, and the parents didn't really care about the setup because it wasn't their guitar; it was a gift it was for little Johnny. So it's, it's strange how you get certain clientele, uh, and the clientele I have now, you guys who are bothering to watch this boring video, you kind of care and you want something quality and you're interested and you know that I'm kind of guiding you the right way. I think when you kind of get involved in some of these brands, brands, um, you, you kind of get into a different world where your service and your value added is really not so important anymore. It's just like, okay, oh, you know, John is asking for it and let's find out if Amazon do it. Um, and that, that, that kind of, I struggled with that side of it. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, Ibanez guitars, I know a lot of them are made by Core. Schecter guitars, I know a lot of them are made by Core. So why would I want to do them? Well, actually, I know you're going to save money if you buy a Court, but if you, as in you, not me, I'm talking about you now, if you're looking for a range of styles, well, Court don't make them all, do they? And if anything, Court deliberately try not to tread on the toes of the people they're working with, who they're making guitars for. So it can be infuriating for me because I want, you know, I'm saying, I, want, I don't want to say too much, but why aren't you making this guitar? Why aren't you making this one? 
and they deliberately don't because they have a good trading relationship with the people who are buying their guitars from them. So that's a really important point. I'll bring you guitars that I love from the court range um, and um, tell you why they're so amazing. Um, but they are making amazing guitars for other people too. So look at, look at those two. It's like, um, I want to be realistic here and, and um, don't want you to feel like, uh, you know, uh, I just want to be clear and as down the middle of the road as I can be. Uh, Im impartial? I'm never going to be impartial, am I? But you know what I'm saying. So hopefully that helps. Um, maybe, maybe if you guys can comment on any guitar that you've bought that you think was made by Court, that'd be pretty cool. Or have you ever bought a Court guitar? Um, that'd be interesting as well. Let me know. Let me know what, you've, um, what your buying experiences are buying Court guitars or um, Ibanez, Schecter, Music Man, <laughs> GNL, Tanglewood. The list goes on and on and on. Okay, hope that helps. Anyway, that's today's um, Court guitars are back. Yes, okay. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye.